Welcome to Arkansas Style. I am your host, Nicole Neiman. Our aging expert, Dr. Jean Way, is back today to help guide us gracefully through the years and remind us of ways we can stay healthy, both physically and mentally. We also talk to Shamika Kristen, coordinator for Benton's Bright Futures Initiative that works to provide children with the care and resources needed to succeed about their New Year's Eve ball drop celebration. And finally, some people call it charcuterie and some people call it antipasto, but whatever you call it, it's delicious. And I am putting together one that is full of the fan favorites and transports me right back to the kitchen with my late Aunt Betty. But before all of we get into that, Linda Starr is the owner of Arkansas's oldest family-owned specialty running store, the Sporty Runner, located in Conway. The Sporty Runner houses anything and everything a runner might need, and Linda makes it her mission to educate people on the importance of running, as well as what having the correct shoe size can do for your overall performance. As statewide clinic director for the Women Can Run clinics, she is responsible for introducing thousands of women to running and walking, and today she is here to show us how the shoes we wear can make all the difference. Okay, Linda, if your feet hurt, Nothing doesn't matter you heard because all over. you hurt all over, right? <laughs> right. And having the right shoe, um, not only for your everyday walking, but running is so important. It is. And this has become your work. It is. All right. Well, tell us about the Sporty Runner. Okay. Well, we will be <laughs> 25 years in business come January. Mm -hmm. And uh, I opened it after I had retired from Southwestern Bell and didn't know anything about retail or anything else, never run a cash register, but we opened as the Sporty Lady, mm -hmm. and after a couple, oh, wait, maybe a couple of months or so, the guys started coming in. We don't have any place to get our stuff. Why don't you open a men's store? And uh, what we did is we waited a little while just to see what they were gonna do and all, and they kept on coming in wanting men's stuff. So we changed the name to the Sporty Runner and added men's. <laughs> and, uh, we, and we were in one side of the building and we owned the other part of the building too. So we decided, well, we need more room now. So we cut a hole in the wall and, uh, and opened up into the other side as well. So now we've got our store on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I tell you, I mean, give, give a busy lady a job and here she is expanding all over. <laughs> and talk about not having a straight line to your end. I love the fact that you've had a career before and mm -hmm. then this is your next chapter <laughs> in life. It right. So you've brought some foot models mm -hmm. here and uh, I'd really like for you to talk to the viewers because I don't think people really appreciate the anatomy of their right. own personal foot, right? Right. Okay. Because they'll come in the store and they'll ask for a shoe and they'll like, I want that one. And mm -hmm. I said, well, what kind of foot do you have? Mm -hmm. And um, they said, well, I don't know. I just like the looks of that one. I said, well, you can't go by looks unless it's the right one. Some will have a high rigid arch like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, they, uh, when they walk, they actually go to the outside. They supinate. So what we need to do is get them in what we call a neutral okay. shoe. Okay. This shoe does not have any support right here. So when they walk and they try to supinate that way, then it's gonna bring them back up straight. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want everybody landing just like that. Okay, so, so nice and flat on your foot, mm -hmm. okay? And when you have a higher arch, you tend to lean towards the outside. And so you're gonna, get, you're gonna need a shoe that's gonna help compensate. Right, right that that Okay, true. gotcha. Okay, All right. and then this one, as you can see, it's much lower. And uh, what you want to do on this one is you've got to have support because this type of foot, when they land, they're going to go to the inside. They're mm -hmm. going to overpronate. And if you're in the wrong shoe, what is going to happen is you're going to start having knee, uh, knee pain, hip pain, back pain, mm -hmm. and all. This shoe has what they call a guide rail mm -hmm. right here. And this guide rail, as you step in it and walk in it or run in it, this guide rail keeps that foot from going down. So it just keeps it, you know, level so that you're landing, again, neutral, like that's what, how we want everybody to land as, that, as far as that goes. Okay. Okay. Then we have the very flat foot. And as you can see, this one is very flat. If it, if it tried to walk like that, they're like this. This is the way they walk, just like that. Oh, so gosh. this one needs what they call motion control mm -hmm. because of being so low on the ground when they're, when they're trying to walk like that. Well, then this one really has the... Um, support and everything in this area mm -hmm. and it will keep again keep that foot from landing just like that so we want all of them landing straight and, and uh, that way instead okay. of going in or out and that way they're not as likely to have any knee pain or, or hip pain or anything like that. I mean, Linda, uh, you just, I mean, blew my mind, okay? Because when I'm shopping for gym shoes, uh, I'm cute. looking for, ex 
<laughs> okay, I'm not alone, you're, apparently. You're, you're actually I had team. no idea that this feature on here, what did you call yeah, this? That one is a guide rail. Now, I some shoes, some of this, I don't, I don't think I brought another one of that, that type, but some of them will just have, you know, foam and all built in, but Brooks actually has a guide rail, and it kind of adjusts where you need it. That's incredible. I never thought to look at the outside of the shoe for the structure of the shoe. Mm -hmm. um, usually, I'm the one who's looking at the inside arch support. Mm -hmm. um, how do you how do you de determine what's important where that's concerned? What we do when they come in, we will mm -hmm. have them take their shoes off, mm -hmm. and we'll have them walk, and we watch them walk. Well, they're about 20 feet down. We'll have them walk down there, turn around, and walk back, and we watch to see are they landing very neutral, mm -hmm. are they going in, are they going out. And that determines which type of shoe we want to put them in. Oh. And so many of them come in and they've never been fitted before. And they may have an arch like that and be in that one. Oh. And then complain them with their feet. Okay. And you're not even talking just about your feet. You're talking about your knees and your yes. hips and your back, yes. right? Yes, yes. It, I it mean, it's all connected. All it's all connected and it can affect it all. Oh, wow. So um, tell me a little bit about the, the bottom tread of these okay. shoes. I see this a lot. Um, what's going on there? This is the own cloud and this is one of the newest addition that we have in our store. Mm -hmm. And you can tell by the bottom of it that it's completely different mm -hmm. from your other shoes. Okay. And uh, they manufactured this certain uh, bottom for this so it would have a smoother landing. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, as you take off, it has a little bit different takeoff. Mm -hmm. So it's a very soft, very comfortable shoe. And uh, we have a lot of people that work, that mm -hmm. love to work in these, not just runners, mm -hmm. but a lot of people love to work. Well, actually, we have a lot of workers that like all of our shoes. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, they really like this one because they say it is so soft and by the end of the day them being on their feet all day it, their legs and all are not as tired. Wow, Linda, this is you've changed the game in, <laughs> in gym shoes. I mean, really and truly, uh -huh. um, I have such a better appreciation for you know what you're what you're looking for right. and what you're buying. Uh, remind people how they can come see you and get uh, this great education and a beautiful product. Okay, we are in Conway, 1016 Van Ronkel. Uh, right by the shoe repair. If you don't know anything else about Conway, we're right by it. It's been there for years. And uh, just come in and uh, tell us what you want. Tell us if you're looking for certain shoes. Uh, then what we'll do is say, well, until we look at your arches and see what you need, then we're not going to put you in just any particular shoe. Okay. We want to make sure we get you in the right shoe. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, if your feet aren't happy, nothing else is going to right. be happy. Well, that Linda, thank you so much for teaching me all this really yes. interesting stuff. And a yes. special shout out to your handsome prince who drove you here today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much uh -huh. for being here. Thank you. Now, on top of running and staying active after the break, Dr. Jean Wei will give us even more tips on how we can stay healthy and age gracefully. We'll be right back with more Arkansas Style on KARK. Welcome back to Arkansas Style. Physicals are not the most fun that uh, take part, but are incredibly important as you age and your body continues to change. Dr. Jean Wei is here today just to discuss the importance of annual physicals and the kinds of tests you should be sure you're getting. Dr. Wei, missed you last week. Yes, I'm so glad you're I here. You too. Thank you so much for having me. Always. I'm delighted to be here, oh, as always. always. I know. So um, today I wanted to talk about annual physicals because yes. The start of the new year is really when people start to put that on their calendar of a yes. list of things to do. Yes. Uh, so if I'm going to go for my annual physical, and let's say you know I haven't established a relationship with a doctor, or you know I've turned the corner in a decade, you know, yes. and, you know what kinds of things should my annual physical include? Yes, thank you. It's it is very important, and some people say, well, you know, I, I feel just fine. I'm not going to go this year. I'll wait till next year. The answer is no. Please don't do that. 
I'll tell you, my mom always used to say, I don't want to go to the doctor today because I don't feel good. I'll wait until I feel better because I don't want the doctor to think that I'm not feeling well. <laughs> anyway, the point of it I is... I kind of sort of get it, but yeah. I mean, I don't mean yeah. to make light of your mother, but I, yeah. I kind of get it. Well, the point of it is really and truly, if you go when you're not sick, and if you go, just go for a regular annual checkup, you'll be so much farther ahead. And if there is anything that needs to be um, evaluated, you can get it evaluated early. And I promise you, you will be so grateful because nowadays we can treat almost anything very promptly. So if something is picked up, how good is that? So rather than wait until you really are sick, that's, that's not the way to go. So yes. Yeah, smart. And so, yeah, if you're at home, you know, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I'm not feeling sick. But, you know, the doctor's going to test you for certain things. Like, what kinds of things are they looking for in your annual exam to yes. keep you healthy? Yes. So, you know, they, you're supposed to fill out your questionnaire, and you're supposed to say what's changed since last visit, or if this is a new uh, doctor visit, you, you do need to write down some things like your medications, you know, your vaccinations, your allergies, things like that. Then you get called back into the examining room and the nurse will take your blood pressure, check your heart rate. Now this is extremely important for everybody, so I wanna emphasize it. Your blood pressure is one of the most treatable conditions and it's one of the most important risk factors for everything, including heart disease, including um, cognitive impairment, including stroke. So you wanna get your blood pressure checked and if it's high, you want to get it treated. Wow, see, and that's, that's what's so incredible though, is that Dr. Yeah. Way, even if you're not going to the doctor, it doesn't mean that your body isn't changing and there yes. are some problems that maybe you've developed that you're not even aware of. You make it so peaceful and comforting to go to the doctor because when you say things are so treatable, it takes that fear factor out. Yes, and you know, it's really good. There's such a thing called health honesty, which is, um, you need to confide in someone and you know nothing goes outside that exam room and the doctor will always be your on your side and the doctor will not share anything that you share with the doctor. So I think that's very important. You want to have a friend. You want to be honest and it's good. It's good to have, it's kind of like a very important relationship and oftentimes they become friends. You know, mm -hmm. I have patients that I see frequently, regularly. Well, there's no way we're not gonna end up being friends, mm -hmm. which is great. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just wonderful for everybody. And that's the way you want it to be. I will tell you a story about someone who went to the doctor and um, he was wondering about the diets, you know, cause everybody, we hear about so many different diets all the time. So the doctor said, well, I have one for you. I'd like for you to try to eat regular meals for two days. And then for the third day, I'd like for you to skip. So he said, okay, doc, I'll try it. So he went home and he came back again um, several weeks later to see the doctor. And the doctor said, well, how are you doing? He said, well, I'm doing good. I've lost 20 pounds. The doctor said, how did you do that? He said, well, I did what you said, but I am just so exhausted. I almost can't even get up after when I skip all day because he thought the doctor meant that he had to skip all day. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Listen, they, sometimes we do take the doctor a little too literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, one last question, yes. um, and quickly. Yes. So the difference between men and women, yes. uh, we typically have to go see an OBGYN yes. and a GP. Yes. Do we have to see both annually? No, not necessarily. If you're, you know, if you're healthy, you're normal, there's nothing that you need to get taken care of or addressed. If you go to your OBGYN person, they can serve as your primary care for quite a bit of time until such time as they think and you think you might have another, you might need another primary care physician. In fact, they count as primary care physicians for most women, many women. Uh, and I was just telling Nicole that once upon a time there was a debate as to whether GYN and OB people can serve as PCPs, and they won. 
So they are actually recognized as primary care physicians. Okay, okay good. Well, I mean, as always, just enlightening information to keep us healthy. And I can't say it enough is that you take a lot of the fear out of going to see the doctor. Will you come back yes. again next yes. week, Dr. Yes, I Way? Will. Thank okay, you. if you at home want to ask any questions of Dr. Way, yeah. I'm always the one kind of coming up with the ideas, but we're happy to, to take your ideas too. Thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank now, when you. we return, Susan Johnson with Kitchen Tune Up will join us for more kitchen inspiration. Stay with us. You're watching Arkansas Style on KARK. You're watching Arkansas Style on KARK. I'm going to sponsor by Kitchen Tune-Up. Welcome back to Arkansas Style and Susan Johnson, owner of Kitchen Tune-Up. Susan is our go-to lady when it comes to updating our, creating our dream kitchen. And today will she, she will show us some fun new ways to spruce up your space. Susan, it's so nice to see you again. Good I you. always enjoy this topic because you know how I feel about the kitchen. It's the heart of your home. That's right. It's the centerpiece. But sometimes inside the drawers is not so yes. delightful. Yes, I thought today, <laughs> in in honor of the new year coming and we all make new year's resolutions about getting organized or or getting our life together that we could just talk a few things that homeowners can do you don't have to have someone like me come in and do it for you you can but these are just very simple things that you were probably taught as a child from your mother to do that we all don't want to do but it will make our life so much better if we'll just do it yeah especially when you're talking about the kitchen because you're yes. in there all the time yes. and if it's gotten away from you you've got some good right. examples on how to get us tidy probably while you were making Christmas cookies you realized oh I have six you know of the same right whatever and people are looking for things in your kitchen and you can't even find it so getting ready for a New Year's Day celebration or just getting ready for the new year the first thing I say is just declutter okay just go through and the thing I see the most that takes up room in kitchens are coffee mugs. Just coffee mugs that oh. we collect forever mm -hmm. for no reason. But mm -hmm. just things that we really don't use that take up so much space. If we can just get those, put them in a box if they're sentimental, but get them out of your space so that you can really find things. I love that idea. So, so just smart. declutter. And, and then after you get the where you have what you really need, organize it. I just brought these things. These We see these every day when we're mm -hmm. at the grocery store or at a home improvement store. Different price points. Just a simple, inexpensive plastic mm -hmm. organization. I actually use this in my bathroom. It's meant for a kitchen, but I use oh. it in my bathroom for my brushes and, and things. But these are all Very typically gosh. trimmable. You can uh -huh. put them in any drawer size. But just kidding your, um, your you tell your uh, utensils and all of your uh, serving pieces mm -hmm. all organized where that you can just easily reach in and grab one or if you've got somebody helping you cook they can easily easily find them as well. So you can take your open drawer space and you can just buy a simple insert and all of a sudden when you open up the drawer it doesn't look like right. a disaster. And most of these, again, this is going to be at a different price point than this. These are trimmable. Okay. And a lot of them you can buy individual ones and really customize it to your drawer. So oh. there's so many ways to just spend a, an hour mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you feel like you have a new kitchen almost. So like, let me ask you, uh, if I go to Kitchen Tune Up and I have just empty drawers and I want to um, declutter and uh -huh. get them organized, utensil drawers are different than um, like your cooking, serving, spatulas, and those different sizes right. things like that. Can you help me yes. with a drawer like that? Yes. Wow. So imagine at home you've got a drawer full of whisks, spatulas, tongs, scissors, right? And they're all these oblong shapes. You can get an insert for us yes. in our drawers that'll make sense of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then look at this. This is great for just spices. This is an insert again that goes in the drawer that lays them down. If you, you know, some people want them out like you have a beautiful display there, but you can put them in a drawer too and then, and they're easy to see. You can put them alphabetical or 
frequent use or however you want to best organize so it. So what you're saying is this goes on the on the on the, the bottom of the drawer yes. and you pull it out and then your spices are looking Just, at you yes. at a little bit of a tilt. Yes. Oh my God, I love that idea. Yes. That is so genius. So and again, I alphabetize mine. So oh, do you? <laughs> so that it's easy to, to find. Different minds work different ways. Oh, Susan, you know, again, it, it does make you feel so much better when you're in your kitchen and things are, you know, everything has its place. Um, I think, you know, decluttering is such a good example of the coffee mugs because I do believe that a lot of us are guilty for collecting the hodgepodge stuff mm -hmm. to just using what you need. Um, right. And then, you know, again, I appreciate that you're giving us some solutions that we could do ourselves, yes. but really a kitchen tune-up, you know, your business is all about taking some of this work and stress out of it and making it really simple and easy for us, right? Absolutely. We would love to come in and help you figure out the best place and how to, you know, we've talked about the pull-out trays, the pull-out trash cans. I mean, there's so many different fabulous organizational things out now for individuals that we can help you, that you might not even know about that we can help you solve. And you really pride yourself on taking that fear of remodeling your kitchen and, out. Yes, yes, yeah. it's, it doesn't have to be scary. We're just people just like everybody else and we're there to serve. See, isn't, I mean, don't you want to work with Susan? <laughs> I mean, I just want to hang out with her, but I definitely want my kitchen to look great like that. Uh, so remind people how they can get in touch with you, okay? You can call us at 501-223-8888 or our website's kitchentuneup.com. We have a Facebook uh, site that you can go out and um, we have a, a showroom in Maumel, 9710 Maumel Boulevard, so come and visit. Yeah, for sure, and go check out the dog. And yes, <laughs> Avi. She just had her 12th birthday. Oh, happy birthday, roof, roof. Don't wear black or you'll have white dog hair all over you. <laughs> that is true, <laughs> but the showroom is such a vast place to choose Thank you. Uh, surfaces and cabinet doors, and um, I mean, really, the ideas are endless. Right. It is Thank always you. a pleasure to see Thank you. you. I love Good your ideas. You You're too. so generous, too, with your time. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. So this segment was sponsored by Kitchen Tune-Up. When we return, we will be putting together the latest craze in appetizers, a meat and cheese tray I call antipasto, some call it charcuterie, and Taylor will be here to help us tell the difference. But either way, you'll call it delicious. Stick around, you're watching Arkansas Style on KARK. All the rage and hype around charcuterie boards is justified. They're delicious, they're easy to prepare, and make a grand presentation. I, however, was taught how to do an antipasto tray. While similar, they are key, there are key differences that heighten your level of enjoyment. My late Aunt Betty was the grand dame of entertaining. Festive menus, family, and sharing. This is her recipe, and sharing it with you helped perpetuate her loving memory. And I'm so happy to share this experience with you all, along with Taylor. Oh. And she's going to tell us the history behind these similar but different boards. And I'm also going to teach you how to do one so you can pass on Aunt Betty's antipasto tray. Well, heck yeah. I mean, I, I love meats and cheese and all the stuff like that. And I'm no pro on the difference between antipasto and charcuterie. However, there is a difference because antipasti or antipasto mm -hmm. is actually Italian mm -hmm. and charcuterie is French mm -hmm. um, and antipasto. Well, antipasto is actually the singular, and antipasti is plural. Ah, okay. But it means before the meal. So in Italian, it translates to before the meal or appetizer, mm -hmm. and uh, usually consists of things like meat and cheeses and things on the side like peppers and onions and things like that, mustards and mm -hmm. charcuterie. Actually, just means like dried, cured meats. So in the old times, like the historical meaning is like just dried cured meats, but people usually will add these sort of things just to add a little bit more variety. And so nowadays they've kind of meshed together and now charcuterie is just like the umbrella word for antipasti. I know, I gotta I got stick with antipasto, or antipasti. Um, 
What a beautiful explanation. Yeah, I was doing heavy research this morning. So I, I'm well versed now in the difference between antipasti. Is that even how you say it, antipasti? I have always said antipasto, but you know, I, I mean really and truly. Well, I guess if it's um, like, one tray. I think after a couple of glasses of wine, I just I call just, it in my belly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! I can uh, agree to that. I um I love that you're helping us um, learn about that because I actually find that people appreciate things a lot more when they hear the story behind them. Yeah. Like we talk about the wine and they talk about where it's from and so I mean just the fact that if you're going to serve one of these antipasto trays, you know now you know the difference between a charcuterie and an antipasto. A little history lesson. A little history lesson, exactly. Okay. Um, how can I help? How can you help? Well, you just keep talking to me if you want. You can okay. cut the bread if you okay. want. So that's another difference here. Um, I like to use fresh bread. I do not like to use crackers. Um, I, you end up making oh, a little tiny sandwich. We yeah, we do have a serrated knife in there somewhere. Um, and just make them kind of small um, slices because then what you do is you just make a little sandwich of salami and cheeses um, and the vegetables. So Aunt Betty was big into presentation and so am I. I polished my silver for you all. Um, one of the key things that Aunt Betty does is she layers the meats and tries to give them a little fluff, a little life, um, and layering them so that they stand up at attention more so than just laying flat. Um, and then you mix up the different meats. When um, I went shopping for this, uh, another one of the non-negotiables for Aunt Betty is a brand called Volpe Salami, and that is the type of brand that you're gonna wanna look for when you're looking for your salamis. Um, I just brought, bought a variety. It's not really anything real specific about what you have to have. It can be hard salami. Um, I have calabrese, um, uh, sopracetta. I love sopracetta and I love it when it's spicy. If you can find spicy sopracetta, that's delicious. Um, not a big fan of um, some of the hams, the Italian hams. Uh, so the only one that I have really is um, a prosciutto. So you can really choose whatever kinds of cured meats that you like. Um, I just happen to like the salamis, pepperonis, um, and like I said, sopracetta. So like check this piece of meat out. Look at how beautiful these are. Can you guys hear me cutting this crusty bread? <laughs> That's I mean, perfect. this is crusty bread. This is the good stuff. Just like an, just like an Italian. Uh-huh. Just like an Italian. Nice and crusty. Mm -hmm. Or you can chip a tooth. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's what I'm looking for in a bread, honestly. Another thing that's cool about the antipasto tray, um, when you make this, if you make it first thing in the morning and you serve it later in the afternoon, it's even better and even better the next day. Um, so don't be worried about this being too fussy, you know, come game time because you can have this done well in advance. Um, and again, you not really totally can see, but you know, you do try to layer the meats and kind of stand them up so that they have um, a little bit of life off of the tray. Another difference, I don't know if you read this, Taylor, but the charcuterie boards traditionally actually don't have cheese on them. Did I, you read I that? I did read that, I did read that. I so, mean. Well, because it's, it's originally just dried cured meats. And well, actually, I think it originated as just dried cured pork, like just pork products and pork meat. It's, it didn't have any beef, it didn't have anything, any vegetables or anything except for just pork, so. And we're pretty sure that they me. both had wine. Yes, everyone was <laughs> drinking wine. Wine was basically water. Uh, okay, honey, I'm gonna finish this. Uh, we're gonna go to commercial, but I want you to learn how to do this so you can do this for your family. Oh, I do it all the time. Anyways, <laughs> I don't need to be taught. <laughs> okay, so up next are the secret touches. There are secret touches. There's more to this whole appetizer apart from any you've had. Stick around, you're watching Arkansas Style on KARK.
Welcome back to Arkansas Style. Our antipasto is coming along very nicely. I have to say, you are going to love making this for yourself at home. Um, as Taylor was just here talking to us about the difference between um, antipasto and charcuterie, um, the antipasto has cheese on it, which the charcuterie typically doesn't. The other thing that the antipasto tray has on it is vegetables. So this actually kind of turns out like a meat salad, I guess you could say, um, but it's so much more than that because when you see this finished, the presentation alone is absolutely stunning. And I can assure you that your friends and family are gonna want you to bring this to every single family party from here on out. Um, it really is a meal in and of itself. Like I'll make this for my family, for my kids, for a dinner and we can just share this um, together because really everything in it um, is healthy and delicious and exactly what you would want to serve um, you know your family. So I've just got some fresh tomatoes. Um, I've done an assortment of salamis already. I've put on the cheeses which I bought Parmesan. I always buy Parmesan um, provolone and I bought Asiago this time. It's That's a pretty um, strong Italian cheese. If you don't mind strong cheeses then you will like um, the Asiago. If you do not like strong cheeses, I would stick with Romano um, mozzarella. I also have some, yeah, some fresh mozzarella balls on this. So the red onion is something you will want to add at the very end because um, that is really, really strong. Um, so again, if you make this ahead of time, if you put this on last, I think that really helps preserve the flavor of the salad where this doesn't overpower it. But just nice thin little, thin little slices and you just sprinkle it on. You see how it's kind of coming together like a salad? It's got the tomatoes and the meats and the cheeses and um, now the vegetables. So I've already pre-cut um, some peppers. Again, this just gives a whole lot of color. You know what I should probably do is let me move some things around here so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, maybe you can see what I'm doing. Sorry, Will, <laughs> my cameraman, am I making you dizzy <laughs> at home? <laughs> You're okay? Oh, you're the best. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some peppers on there. Um, thinly sliced. I've got artichoke hearts. Now this is kind of where you can, you can riff. Um, whatever you like, you can add. Whatever you don't like, you don't have to add. I just happen to like all of these things and Aunt Betty liked them all too. Big fan of pepperoncinis. So I've got um, some mild, I didn't buy hot pepperoncinis, but absolutely love it. Oh my god, my mouth is watering. Whoa. Okay, and then I did some hard-boiled eggs. I don't know. If you're not a fan of hard-boiled eggs, that's cool. I just happen to think they look really pretty on the tray. So it's more for presentation than it is necessarily if you love to eat them. Um, let's get that off of there. Do you all feel like you can do this at home? I'll put this recipe on the website. I mean, there's really not a recipe, it's just the ingredients. Um, but again, the key to this antipasto tray, in my opinion, is that it's all about presentation. Um, so it's, you know, you've really got to be sure that you take the time to layer the meats and have them kind of stand up at attention and the cheeses and things so not everything is kind of laying flat. Okay, oh my God, I'm out of breath, people. Um, I'm having so much fun though. So all of our ingredients are on the charcuterie and you ought to know what the secret ingredient is. Okay, here's Aunt Betty coming to town. We're gonna sprinkle some garlic powder on the top of this. Yes, see how it becomes kind of a salad? And then we are going to sprinkle some oregano on top. Lots of oregano, lots and lots and lots. You know, it is antipasto after all. So you're gonna want that. Okay, and then some salt on top. Everything needs a little salt on there. And fresh ground pepper. So again, we've got salamis, we've got sopracetta, we've got pepperoni, we have asiago, we have parmesan, we have mozzarella. Um, we have pepperoncinis, tomatoes, peppers, just regular fresh peppers, artichoke hearts, and some egg. And now we're just doing our Italian dressing on here to zhuzh it up, as you know I like to say. And then this just sits and marinates. Oh my gosh, how proud will you be serving this to all of your friends and family? I mean, just absolutely gorgeous and the taste is incredible. So there we have it. Okay, put a little 
thing on there. So Aunt Betty helped me raise my four kids. Um, she was so much fun. She was a big fan of getting kids in the kitchen. You know I am too. Um, this is definitely something that your children can help you with. Um, she told my kids to eat the trees off the leaves of broccoli. I mean, if that isn't making broccoli seem like it's fantastical food, I don't know what is, but if she can make my kids to eat broccoli, then um, I say everything she touches turns to gold. And here's a shout out to my beautiful Aunt Betty. How do you like the antipasto tray, huh? Do you feel like you can all do that at home? Well, there you have it. Everybody gets to dive in on the set. Will, you gonna taste it? <laughs> okay, I'm always picking on you. Okay, so Shamika Kristen, a coordinator for Benton's Bright Futures Initiative, will join us after the break to talk about their New Year's Eve celebration that will support their mission to help children in the community. Stay with us, you're watching Arkansas Style on KARK. This segment is sponsored by Bright Futures and the City of Benton. Welcome back to Arkansas Style. Bright Futures Benton is a community initiative within the Benton School District that streamlines school, community, human services, and business resources to meet the needs of students. And they have partnered with a C a C a, wait let's see a C D I there we go to put on a New Year's Eve ball drop that will help support their mission Shamika Kristen coordinator for Bright Futures Benton is here to extend an invite and tell us more about what to expect thank you for being here thank you for having me okay well New Year's Eve it's always fun to do a party but to have a, a cause attached to it yes so um, ACI has been very supportive of Bright Futures Benton and they are hosting um, their ball drop um, New Year's it's from 5 to 12 free event. Uh, we'll have vendors and live music and I'm excited. I mean it's just a great way for the community to partner with Bright Futures and give back and support our students. Oh I mean and to have such a long um, period of time to really enjoy the celebration you know I mean if you're an early riser or you want to start early you know <laughs> you don't have to stay up until midnight if you don't want to. Exactly exactly I mean everything is downtown um, on the main street of Benton so I mean you can come and go as you please. I normally am not want to stay up for, for uh, New Year's, but I will be there this year. <laughs> Okay, and tell me, um, what is Bright Futures? What, is, what have you been okay. doing there? <laughs> so Bright Futures, is, um, it is basically, it's a, it has a framework in which we are um, partnered with different local businesses, uh, faith-based organizations, human services um, within the community, and we also um, are attached to the school. So the school, we see the students that are in need. Um, you know, it could be food, it could be clothing, it could be shelter, it can be furniture, which I've delivered a lot of furniture mm -hmm. for our students. So basically, what will happen the staff within our school district will come to me and say hey this student needs this and I will go out into the community and said hey is there somebody that can help meet the need of this student because you got to think about it how can a student go in and be successful if they don't have their needs met mm -hmm. it's kind of hard for you to sit there and say hey go learn this in class whenever you didn't eat the night before so it's very difficult you know for them so we just try to solve that issue so that way they'll be more um, successful um, academically as well as socially. And if you have any question about this charity actually going from point A to point B and nothing in between, I mean, really and truly, the impact you must be feeling and seeing has got to be so immediate and great. 
I yes, this is by far some of the most rewarding work that I have ever done, and I've I've had a pretty successful life and career. But what I'm doing now, it's I mean, it's amazing being able to serve others. I've always had a servant heart. However, I will say this: there's a lot of work that has to be done, and it gets done. But I have a team of volunteers, about 20 ladies, more or less. They are absolutely amazing. Then just the community in Benton alone mm -hmm. we have like it's Benton proud and they take care of their own so if they know about it they hear about it they get behind it and they make sure that the initiative is pushed forward oh my gosh and to be able to help children too I mean who oftentimes can't help themselves I mm -hmm. mean they really do rely on the good you know the good graces of everybody around us to do that right exactly and that's a lot of times whenever I go and speak um, about this this initiative and this framework I tell people I'm like hey listen it's not the child's fault that they may have um, some needs that are not being met or that they're in a situation that they're in so you know think about it if you have you know as a parent you have a child that's that problem child how does that affect you the next day or even even mm, at that time, mm -hmm. you know, or what if you are married and you're having some issues and dis differences within your marriage? How does that make you feel? Now imagine a child that can't help it. They don't have running water, lights or food. That's not for them to be, you know, they can't go out and get those things typically on their own. Of course. So imagine Nor how should they, they have to. Exactly. They're children. Exactly. Yes. So uh -huh. it's like, how do they feel and how can we help them, you know, to be able to Thrive is basically our, our main motto, but we literally, Bright Futures Benton is just bridging the gap between what we see at school every day in the community, and the community is just getting behind it and supportive. And I have to say Benton is by far one of the best communities that I've ever been around, wow. been in. Wow, wow. So if you're at home um, and you really want to help connect with the community and the children, I mean, what would you encourage people to do? Well, we do have a, a Bright Futures um, Facebook, and normally that's actually one of our tiers of how we get the um, get the need met. So our first tier is like we use those human services agencies or our churches and we say, hey, can you help us? If we don't get the need met in that first tier, we go to our social um, media page, which is our Facebook, Facebook page, Bright Futures Benton, and we put it out there. We tell the story, but we keep it all anonymous and private so no one will ever know what kid it is what family it is none of that is you know put out there but say hey this is their story can you help mm -hmm. and we normally get the get the need met within 15 minutes literally oh like that's how, that's how powerful social media has been you know for us and so and if we just for some from for some reason do not get the need met there then we have what's um known as our high needs fund which is our third tier and that will be just like this event with the ball ball drop from mm -hmm. acdi mm -hmm. um a portion of the proceeds from the vendors there will go to our high needs fund so mm -hmm. that way we will go ahead and pay for whatever that need is for that student the, uh, this absolutely warms my heart i mean really it truly it is so comforting to know that there's people out there like you that are connecting these kids with the resources that they need uh, and so, you know, remind everybody about the ball drop and how they can come and, okay. and check it out. Yes, so the ball drop will be December 31st um, from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. and it's at the ACDI headquarters, which is downtown um, Benton, 403 North Main Street in Benton, Arkansas. Um, please come out, support, have a lot of fun. It is an absolutely free event um, and I hope to see everyone there. And remind them about the Facebook page because again, if you're at home and you wanna get involved, this is exactly where they're gonna give you the real-time information on how you can connect. Yes, please like our Facebook Benton page. Um, it is Facebook, or I'm sorry, Bright Futures Benton, and you know, just like and follow us. Okay, perfect, I love it. Oh, thank you so much, you've made my day. Oh, I really you. appreciate it and continued success to you and your organization. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. You're watching Arkansas Style on KARK. You're watching Arkansas Style on KARK. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to follow us on social media for behind the scenes footage and visit our website for clips of the show that you may have missed or just want to rewatch for a second time. I want to thank all of you, all of our guests for coming in and spending some time with us. You are all so great and we could not do this without you. We will see you all again next time with love. Mwah. Thank you for watching Arkansas Style with Nicole Neiman. Furniture provided by Hank Spine Furniture.